Hi, John here. Welcome to part one of my how to make a mannequin video. This came out of a need to build a mannequin uh, for work. We needed something to be a specific height and build. We also needed a specific pose. So an off the shelf mannequin unfortunately wouldn't have worked. For three days work, I don't think it's bad. So I started with an anatomy sculpt I had made a few years ago. Um, I did a, a few small tidy ups you always do when you revisit old work, but, but nothing major. Bringing it into Maya, as the final mannequin needed to be six foot, uh, we can put a scale next to it. Each cube is an inch split up into feet. The body will be sliced in two inch sections, whilst the head will be uh, one inch sections. Simple boolean later, and here we go, our sliced figure. Horizontal slices for the body, I made sure to slice in two inch sections going down the length of the arm. Um, it will make it easier to cut out and, and definitely put back together later. Next, we need to separate out each two inch slice, uh, a top and a bottom shape. Make a few duplicates of your mesh. The first layer needs to be uh, the bottommost slice and the one up from that. The next, that one and the one up from there and so on. Each two inch slice on our finished mannequin will sit on top of the one below it. The bottom shape of one layer needs to match up with the top shape on the slice below. Once you've gone all the way up your figure, you will have all of your layers to begin arranging for printing. The blocks I'm going to use are 32 inches by 22 inches. I know this because I researched what I could buy locally beforehand. Make a few cubes in Maya the correct size of our foam sheets and we can arrange our layers to fit the fewest foam sheets as possible. I figured out I could condense it all into five two inch sheets and one one inch sheet for the head. The red line is the top of my slices and the blue line is the bottom of my sliced pieces. Screen grab each layer and bring them into Photoshop individually. Make it more print ink friendly by adjusting to black and white and scale accordingly to the size of the foam blocks. Make sure your DPI is the same, otherwise you will have size problems later on. We need to properly label everything as we go, very important. Otherwise, you'll end up with a, a mass of foam shapes with no idea what goes where. Which sheet it is, top or bottom, and what number the cross sections are. I started with one on the feet and went up to, to 40 something in the head. Also, mark what direction it is forward facing. Very important. That will come in handy later. Next, create a new document that's an A4 piece of paper. Same DPI. An A4 page is, is what goes through most home printers. It certainly does mine. We need to break up our sheets so we can get them all printed. You can't easily go right to the edge of an A4 page when printing, so we need to make our sections slightly smaller. That seems good, and let's start cutting it up. Once separated, you can see they all fit on an A4 piece of paper, and we can go ahead and get printing. Once all printed, we need to cut off the excess around the edges and begin to sellotape them back together. As it's both top and bottom layers, you will have 12 large sheets. Keep them together with paper clips so you don't confuse one layer with another. Our strong labelling here certainly helps. It's a bit of a small jigsaw puzzle figuring out what goes where um, and then sellotape together. And do the rest. Put the others aside for now and let's concentrate on one sheet. Yeah, 
it did take me a while to realise I should be using a Stanley knife much quicker. And cut out all of your shapes. I'm using a cardboard back here uh, so I don't scratch my work surface. Once they are all cut out, let's focus on one layer's top and bottom for now. Layering one top and bottom on top of each other, they should look like your Maya screen grabs from earlier. Right, onto the foam. I'm using two inch foam blocks I bought from Dunelm, 39 inches by 22 inches, link down below. One foam block costs about 15 pounds, so I'm using 85 pounds worth of foam overall for this project. Lay your top sheet on the top. Make sure it's all lined up properly with the edges of the foam. I found pins are a good way to keep the paper in place as you draw round. Get a nice thick black marker pen and start to draw your shapes. I did go through quite a few pens as they run out quickly on this stuff, but they're quite cheap. Write back on your pieces their number and what direction is forward. As I said, you'll need that later. Once that's done, turn it over and, and do the bottom side. Remember to get it lined up correctly. Make sure forward is forward. As you can see, I've turned my bottom paper upside down as that's the correct way it needs to be. Um, I had to think about it for a second, but it is correct. Once again, draw your shapes. And repeat, five more sheets to go. When it came to cutting out my sheets of foam, um, I've always found a bread knife to be the best cutting tool, at, at least to get your buff forms in. When you get to the details, scissors are best, but the bread knife gets you most of the way there quickly. Remember to masking tape your fingers as you don't want blisters. It's very easy to get them from so much cutting. As your shapes are different on the top and the bottom, make sure you don't cut off more foam than you should. Take it slow at first. This part does take a few hours, but it is nice to see the pieces piling up. Once you're done, you've got a big old pile of hopefully well-labeled foam pieces. It doesn't look like it's enough for a six foot person, does it? But I can assure you it is. Come back in a few days for part two as I start to put it all together.